Well, good evening. Welcome to the 6 p.m. press conference here on the CZU complex. My name is Jonathan Cox, Deputy Chief for CAL FIRE San Mateo Santa Cruz Unit and uh, Line Officer here on the incident. As always, if you could just keep your cell phones muted and take any conversations outside the press conference area, as well as keep your masks on at all times. There will be an opportunity after all the speakers, as usual, for some questions and answers, and then one-on-ones after the formal press conference. Uh, just for an update, I know uh, this is uh, an as-needed press conference. We wanted to give the uh, latest acreage this evening of 86,102 acres, 86102. Uh, as you uh, have been witnessing, that number is changing a couple times a day. We anticipate having the final acreage tomorrow sometime uh, that we anticipate holding the fire at. Uh, we are using um, uh, IR infrared flights in the evening to get the latest perimeter uh, and look for hot spots that may still be within the fire perimeter, uh, kind of for what we call seek and destroy to kind of get that heat uh, identified and, and cooled down. The fire is at 51% contained, so we've, we've uh, crossed that 50% threshold. We do still have 7,647 structures that are threatened in and around the fire itself. The number of structures destroyed has uh, been finalized, 100% complete on the initial damage inspection at 1,490. Uh, that number has been published and will be continue to be published. Of those 1,490, 59 are in San Mateo County, and 1,431 of them are in Santa Cruz County. In Santa Cruz County, that includes 925 single-family residents and 14 single-family residents in San Mateo County. We still have 8,221 people who are evacuated from the fire area, and we have 1,777 firefighters uh, on the line, including over 300 National Guard uh, firefighters. With that, the real focus at the moment, now that the mitigation is winding down, has been on the repopulation and recovery that's going on. Uh, we have a lot of information uh, and speakers here to really focus on that uh, because that is really where the interest is right now, is the repopulation of this area uh, and what recovery looks like. So with that, I'll pass it over uh, to Santa Cruz County Sheriff's uh, Chief Deputy Chris Clark. Good evening. Uh, so I, I mentioned this yesterday um, that we've mentioned it before, that it's a day-by-day -day process. And we understand how frustrating that is for folks uh, is you're where you are displaced from your home and then wondering when am I going to get back home. So I, I wanted to kind of give some perspective with regards to what's happening today and then what's happening over the coming days. So with regards to how we make the decisions on who comes home, it's based on really an, an immediate need to protect someone's safety from a, either electrocution or, or potential crews. And, and, and as that transitions from, a, from an active fire operation, which it is, into more of a, of a recovery and repopulation plan, uh, that focus is making sure that if, if we let you, that if we say an area is okay and people can go back home, that there's not a danger there, which is going to cause an immediate risk to life. And so we make those decisions uh, through cooperation with uh, or in, in information from our, our partners at PG&E, uh, because obviously power uh, with the lines down and the poles being down, there's the, there's that that needs to be repaired, and then public works with regards to is the road safe? You know, is it is a large tree going to fall on my uh, you know fall across the road or fall on you as you're in that area? So uh, over the last couple days, and the reason that we wanted to get back to these press conferences because there's a lot going on right now, and, and this information we know is is absolutely. Uh, vital for you uh, wherever you are in, in trying to, to find out what's going on and, and when am I get back when am I getting back home so over the last couple days and, and today and this is going to continue till we get everyone back home uh, we, we you know our planning team we drove around we looked at certain areas uh, today an area of southwest Bonnie Dune was, was repopulated that information went out at three o'clock and as you've noticed these these notices on when you can go back home have been consistent and that's because we want to keep it that way so there's no surprises with regards to when you get the information. Uh, in terms of what's to come tomorrow, it, it's, you know, as we've moved basically from the less in fire impacted areas uh, into more fire impacted areas, then that's basically going from east to west. We're doing that again as we come from basically, and then we're moving into Bonnie Dune. And so there'll be coming information tomorrow. Um, and, uh, and, and so there's some things to think about as you get back into those areas, especially, you know, the, the, the fire impacted areas of Bonnie Dune. And so, you know, you get back home and say, so, so say tomorrow, you, you return to your home in, in, in an area of, of Bonnie Dune and, and you want to make sure that A, that there's, there's nothing smoldering. You know, Cal Fire is still mopping up fires here and there. 
but there's a lot of nooks and crannies. There was a lot of embers that flew in, uh, out of this fire. And so you'd, you'd want to make sure, and the county's working on information to provide to you. And so uh, Matt Machado, who's with the, the county administrative office, is going to be speaking here shortly on a, on a lot of that that the county's doing to protect you and, and, make, and make things safer for you. But, uh, you know, just in terms of making sure that if there's anything smoldering on your property, make sure you, you search, you, you know, your property and, and, and make sure there's nothing smoldering or smoking that might create a, a continued issue. The other thing I want to talk about is, uh, is power. So, we, you know, getting you back home is, is, is important. Uh, you know, I've heard basically, we've heard through, through different folks that have contacted us that, that, there's, that living in the mountainous areas that, you know, power, you've gone without power before. And, that, and so a lot of people have generators. And so there's going to be a period, there's going to be a while, you know, PG&E is working on it, but that line that provided power to Bonnie Dune and a lot of areas of Boulder Creek was destroyed during the fire and their substations were destroyed. So we're a little ways out, uh, like a week to three weeks potentially, that's what I was informed by PG&E this afternoon, on getting power back into those areas of Bonnie Dune and, and Boulder Creek. So it's going to be some time before you're going to see power. So I say that because if I was living in that area, I'd absolutely want to make sure that you know, my generator was full of fuel or I had uh, resources. Um, Matt's going to talk about water too, because water is also an issue as you get into those areas. But the SLB Water District is working hard on, on repairing their line, which was also, which was also destroyed. In terms of activity that we saw, so again, a heavy police presence on our end, and again, we're not going away. Uh, our deputies and our officers uh, aren't going anywhere until everyone's back home. And so with that, we had no arrests or citations over the last 24 hours, which is a, which is a good thing. Uh, last night, we had 20 officers and deputies that were patrolling uh, the evacuated areas. Uh, today, we had 34, which was 24 from our office and 10, again, from our in-county partners. Tonight, we'll have 28. And so again, making sure that that everyone's there, that, no, that, that there's no one there for the, for the wrong reasons. In terms of calls for service, uh, over the last 24 hours, we responded to five welfare checks and 10 suspicious people, and our missing persons count still stands at two. And as I've mentioned before, those two people, uh, again, not missing from a, uh, an area that was ravaged by fire, but the, so the detectives are kind of saying those folks are still potentially, they were evacuated, but we still want to make sure that we, uh, we know where they are. And then lastly, the county's uh, set up a recovery resource center at uh, the Kaiser Permanente Arena in downtown Santa Cruz, as we've mentioned before, but I just wanted to mention as well that we'll have a deputy that's gonna be there seven days a week between the hours of 11 and three. So if there's anything that, uh, any questions you have with regards to you know, the sheriff's office or what we're doing up here and what we're seeing, um, uh, you know, feel free to stop in there at the, uh, the Kaiser Permanente or at the Recovery Resource Center. And, uh, and ask our deputy who will be there again from 11 to 3, ask him those questions uh, uh, to be able to provide you more information. Thank you. Speaking next from the San Mateo County Sheriff's Office is Lieutenant Dan Reynolds. Good afternoon. I'm Dan Reynolds with the uh, San Mateo County Sheriff's Office. <clears throat> like to share some information with you. Today, as of 3 p.m., we opened the following areas and zones. They're open to residents only. Areas north of Canyon Road, which make up zone 98, and Lomomar and Dearborn Park, which make up zone 18. And again, that's open to residents only. As residents begin to go home, please be mindful that traffic interruptions may exist due to fires and utilities equipment working in the area. Please be respectful of our residents during this recovery phase. Give them time, space to process and grieve if needed. And we encourage you to uh, visit our county parks that have reopened, those that have reopened instead of coming to the beaches and as well take advantage of our other beautiful outdoor San Mateo County resources. And for a list of the open parks and resources, you may visit parks.smcgov.org. As for the closed zones, the ones that still remain closed, it would be E38, E19, E55, as well as Butino Park. And lastly, I'd like to uh, remind you or share that there's a local assistance center open at the Pescadero Elementary School. It will be open through Wednesday. It opens daily at 10 a.m. And the address of the Pescadero, Pescadero Elementary School is 620 North Street. 
Thank you. Our final speaker this evening from the Santa Cruz County uh, um, County Administrator's Office and also representing the recovery efforts in the EOC is Matt Machado. Thank you and good evening. So I'm going to cover a bit about infrastructure, both the private and the public side. Uh, yesterday we submitted our initial damage assessment to the state. It totaled $340 million. That included $30 million of public infrastructure and $310 million of private infrastructure, which includes homes and related structures. The assessment will be updated multiple times, so we'll continue to gather that information. And so uh, we're still capturing that. Cal OES and FEMA are reviewing this information for us now so that we can get approval for category A and C, which is debris removal and permanent restoration. We hope to get that approval by the end of next week, and then we can start the uh, debris removal program, which will include a work plan out of the county's facilities. Our public infrastructure team continues to remove trees and debris from the, the roadways. Uh, we are focused on getting proper signage up for safety reasons. I would ask that everybody be extra safe. Those roads are going to be dark at night and without all the standard signage. Be extra careful, please. Uh, a little bit about our um, other work going on on the Swanton Road. We're still uh, working on two bridges. One of them is a full replacement. That work should be complete by the end of next week. And we have uh, three culverts that are also being replaced. So please be patient in that area. On our water and wastewater fronts, both uh, critical infrastructure. In Davenport, we did lose our supply line about 15,000 feet. And as that, re that line is being repaired and replaced, we will be trucking water to the community. So we will have water for everybody that's there. Uh, please conserve water though. In our Boulder Creek area, we have a wastewater plant that we lost as part of our CSA 7. Uh, it does appear that the, uh, the system that takes water from the home to the system is operational. And uh, it's the system from the wastewater treatment out is what's damaged. And so we'll be trucking uh, the wastewater out of there. And so it is going to be functional for homeowners, uh, but um, we'll be trucking it. So we'll please be understanding. And then with San Lorenzo Valley Water District, they do have 3,197 customers that are under the do not drink order. They have 354 customers without water. They're planning to get those customers back online. They tell me that by September 12th, they'll have those customers back on, uh, but their system is, is in, a, in a fragile position, so please conserve water. They are offering bottled water available to everyone at their district office in Boulder Creek. County building inspectors and environmental health inspectors are going parcel to parcel to conduct safety assessments for those structures. They, that safety assessment will result in placards. Those placards will be red, so that means you can't inhabit, yellow, so they'll have some issues, or green. For the areas that they cover, if there's no placard, that's a green placard. To date, the team has assessed 470 parcels. They will be working through the weekend and into next week to complete their assessment. As areas are repopulated, garbage service will return. It will be back on its normal schedule, so please be patient. Also, as part of the repopulation, we are providing re-entry kits. These re-entry kits will be stationed at entry points to these areas. These kits will include your standard PPE, personal protective equipment, N N95 masks, gloves, water, hand sanitizer, and information about the potential toxins that you may encounter on your home site. Those sites will be uh, open from three to seven uh, as the repopulation occurs. And finally, I'd like to offer up and inform everybody or remind everybody that FEMA is still offering individual disaster assistance to individuals. They have a $500 uh, application program that you can receive $500 that is uh, dead sunsetting on September 5th. The county is pursuing an extension for that. Uh, so check out uh, disasterassistance.gov. Thank you. All right, with that, we're happy to answer any questions you might have. All right, as usual, everyone up here is available for one-on-ones after this. 
Uh, we are going to continue with press conferences as needed, so please uh, stay tuned to emails and social media. With that, we'll go ahead and conclude the 6 p.m. press conference. Thank you.